Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Sunday Worship Broadcast. Go get your Bible and let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. The Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, that's right. Praise God. Thank you. You can be seated. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to Walking True Christian Fellowship Church uh, broadcast and church service. We hope that you hear something that will encourage you, inspire you, and ask the age old question, what must I do to be saved? Amen. Amen. We thank God that anyone would take the time to come join us for our service. Amen. And we know that you could be uh, many different places, but you came here to worship. And I hope that you have an encounter with God today right here. Amen. So let's get started with scripture and prayer from Brother Steve. And then we're going to have exhortation from Sister Kay. And we're going to just walk on down the road into the word of God. Amen. 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 Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Scripture I got today is from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 through 15. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, Uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Amen. 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 All right, let's bow our heads and our hearts for prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we could all be here today, Lord. We thank you that we could all be here to worship your name, Lord, and to glorify you, Lord. We thank you for another day, Lord, another service, another chance, Lord, to worship you and to praise you. Lord, I pray that you bless the service, Lord, and I pray that you bless the speaker and that we hear a message from you today, Lord. Continue to help us all to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hold on, give me a minute. I'm coming. <laughs> you know, I I, I I don't know. I had the I had my Bible open, right? I just want to read this real quick. Uh, it's it's something. Uh, uh, right now, I'm I'm so excited and aesthetic right now. Because I see my other half in here. And not only do I see my other half, I see somebody they say look like me. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. But I think she look like her daddy. But anyway, you know, I'm so excited yeah, on today. Yeah. I thank God for what he's doing. Right. <laughs> you know, when you say, when you, you think you ain't doing nothing, you're doing something. Yeah. See, I just thank God today. I, I just want to read the scripture, and it comes from 2 Corinthians from the fourth chapter. And it said, therefore, since we have this ministry as we receive mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame. Not walking in craftiness or adul adulterating the word of God, but by the manifestation of truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Amen? Amen. And the only thing I got out of that is uh, this little light of mine. <laughs> you know, because, you know, when you think your light not shining, it's shining so bright you can't even see. <laughs> you know, I thank God for unveiling a lot of things to me in reference to my family. See? See, so a lot of people don't want to talk about their family, man, because that is the hardest people to reach. Yes, yes. But when God is on your side, yeah. when God is on your side, yeah. he can change some things. Yeah. 
You know, I I don't I you know, I just sometimes I, you just can't find the words to say. You just you just don't know what to say. All you want to do is thank God. All you want to do is rejoice and thank God for moving the way that He moves. You know, I don't know about y'all today. Come on, come on, come on, you got it. God is good. God is good. He do some amazing things that we can't even see. You don't even know what He done done. You don't know what kind of work He's doing until He start revealing it and showing it. See, I don't know about y'all today. See, some of y'all scared to shout. I don't know if shout is out of the church. But sometimes you gotta give God some praise. Sometimes you gotta shout. Sometimes you gotta say hallelujah. Sometimes you just gotta fall to your knees and thank God for what he's doing. Even when you can't see him. Oh my God. See, I don't know about y'all today. You might have to take the mic. But I tell you, God has been so good. <laughs> the last couple of six hours, I take it all the way back six months. <laughs> oh no! You know what time, y'all? I know I don't know about y'all, but this is me, Lord. You know, sometimes we always asking the Lord to give us a word, show us, Lord, show us. He's showing us twenty four seven. I be riding with my daughter, she give me a word, and I take that word, and I see the spiritualness in it. But see, the reason I'm putting them on her on front street today because she has given me so much, and I just want to let her know, and my husband know, and my grandson know that I love y'all. Sometimes I can be a little hard. Sometimes I can be a little pushy. But you know what? That's all right, because God is in control. I'm learning to step back and let him have the wheel. You know what? Sometimes when you just step back and let God have the wheel, <laughs> he'll open up some stuff you didn't ever imagine. So I want to tell y'all today, I don't know who you're pushing. I don't know who you're hitting across the head. I don't know who you're cutting with that knife. Hey, step back and let God put a bad name on it. <laughs> I thank God today. I thank you. I don't care if they don't show up another day. The day is this is the day. This is the day the Lord has made. And Lord knows I'm gonna rejoice. I don't know about y'all. I want y'all to rejoice with me. I want y'all to praise the Lord with me. I want y'all to say hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You know, sometimes my grandson come in and he got that face, y'all don't pay no attention to that face. <laughs> I used to have the same face when my mom used to make me go to church. I don't want to go. But if you can go out, she said, if you can go out and party on Saturday, you can come in and praise the Lord on Sunday. She said, and you're not going to sleep. She used to pinch us. Pinch us so hard, I tell you, I'm like, oh my God, this lady don't believe me. But you know, you, I thank her for that. Because I look now, how far I had came yes. in believing in the Lord from yes. sitting under these church people. Yes. We used to sit in church and we used to laugh at the women shouting and they wigs fly off. We'd be like, that lady wig don't fill off. I don't care. You're in there. You're listening. You hear something. Amen. It don't matter what you're paying attention to sometimes when you come to church, but I guarantee you, if somebody preaching the word of God, you're going to hear it. And it's going to stick to you. Right now, you might be in a little darkness, but the Lord said, he is the marvelous light. Yes. He has created in you something new. Yes. So hold on to that newness that you have. Your identity has changed. Yes. You are a new creation yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Sometimes it may not feel like it, but you're new. Yes. Sometimes things get in the way, but you're new. Yes. Remember that. You knew. Because Christ has created in you a new heart. Yes. You no longer have a stony heart. Yes. You have a heart of flesh. Yes. And only God can work through that heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. We just thank God today that we can come and uh, dine on his word today. Um, 
this is as we begin to do First Corinthians, I'll be preaching through First Corinthians. And then when Venus gets started on Jeremiah, I'll be preaching through Jeremiah at the same time. Um, so let's open up our Bibles to First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter one, verses one through nine. When you get it, say amen. amen. I'm going to try to be calm today. But with Karen, that excitement is contagious. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. I, I, I want to make this real plain today. There's a lot of people out here who think that um, church is a place for just uh, people who have have got it all together. You, you look, you've been, you think that the people sitting next to you, some of you people think the person sitting next to you got more Holy Ghost than you. You think the person sitting next to you, or you look at me, or you look at others, and you figure that we have been uh, uh, elevated to some kind of sainthood that we have obtained ourselves. But let me tell you something. There's nothing you can do to get yourself right. So that myth, that urban legend that you need to get yourself right, you know, and I know, that if you could get yourself right, there wouldn't be no need for you to be here. For you young folks, let me tell you something. The church is full of hypocrites. Don't, don't get nervous, y'all. What I'm saying, I'm going to make it plain. The church is full of hypocrites because we need a place to go so God can get us right. Amen. We need a place to go so somebody can speak some life into us. Amen. So we won't be as hypocritical as we were yesterday. Amen. Everybody has some issues. Everybody has some problems. And nobody had more problems than this church in Corinth. <laughs> as we study this thing through Corinth, they done did some kind of everything. Sexual sin, perversion. All kind of stuff. It was it was uh, in laws having sex with in laws, and and you had all kind of lasciviousness going on, all kind of debauchery going on. They were DL. We say down low. They were debauchery and lasciviousness. Amen. And this is what this church was about. But I, I want you to notice something that there's always a paradox. There's always a paradox when it comes to saints. Uh, we're not perfect, but we're perfect. We're not holy, but we're holy. And it sounds like I'm double talking, but the, 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 the issue, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is the paradox is we're something not of our own, but we are something because the one who is something says we're something. Amen. We're not declared righteous because we're righteous. We're declared righteous because he declared us righteous. Yes. It's only through his declaration that decree and declare mean anything. You can spend all your time decreeing and declaring. It don't mean nothing. But when God decrees, it has to come to pass. Amen. Thank you. So we want to talk about that today in this church. And, and like I say, this will probably be a, a multiple point lesson. But uh, Steve, go ahead. Let's read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 through 9. 1 Corinthians 1, starting at 1. Speak up. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This church was so messed up. Go to uh, 
First Corinthians five and one. Read that, Steve. First Corinthians. I want to just show you something before we get started. Five and one. Uh huh. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. <laughs> For a man has his father's wife. Amen. That's the church. Yeah, that's true. He ain't talking about outside the church, y'all. Nope. Go to 7 and 1. 7, starting at 1. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But because of the temptations to sexual immorality... Each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. So we got paganism going on. We got sexual morality going on. We got uh, all kind of things that even the heathens don't do. Mm-hmm. Inside the church. Mm-hmm. See, sometimes people read this, you think he's talking to, to, talking to people outside the church. But let's go back. Let's see this. Now, now they <laughs> sent us on steroids. Yeah, yeah. But they're called the church. Y'all, 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 y'all need to think about that. Just, just, just let that sink in. They are called the church. And more importantly, read just verse 1 and 2. We're going to camp out just at verse 1 and 2. Read that. What, 1, 2, and 3. Read that. In chapter 1. Uh-huh. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes. Sosthenes. And this is the key about Sosthenes. You need to go back and read, and I'm not going to do it today. Go back and read Acts chapter 18 uh, uh, when Paul founded the church on his second missionary journey. You'll find out that Sosthenes was an enemy of Paul, but then Paul won him over. All right? And like I say, more about Corinth later, but, but just remember, Sosthenes was an enemy, just like Paul was an enemy. But we have to believe once the gospel and truly is given, that God, in his perfect time, went over the heart. Okay, so Sosthenes is with him as he's writing about, and Sosthenes is from Corinth, so he knows how bad they are. He's the one that wrote it to Paul and say, "This is what's going on in the church that you didn't found." Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, go ahead Keep to reading. the church of God that is in Corinth, the, the church of walking truth of God, church of God, the same church you read about in five and one and seventy one is called what the church of God. To those sanctified in Christ Jesus. To those who are what? Sanctified. Sanctified. In Christ Jesus and? Called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just want you to hang, stop right there for a second. So this church of these DL people, the Botry and Lascivious people, are called saints and they're called to be sanctified. Mm-hmm. That's the paradox. Mm-hmm. How can I be so sinful, but I'm a saint too? That's the paradox. The paradox is always there's something must be going on because I can identify with my sinship, and but I can't identify with my sonship. Mm. And the paradox is I'm both at the same time. Because the only person can be called a saint is a sinner. Amen. And the only person to be sanctified is a sinner. And it's interesting about the word saint and sinner is from the same Greek word, the hagios, and, and uh, 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 sanctified is hagiosmo. It, it, it means that you're set apart. But you're not just set apart by anybody. You're set apart by God because he said, this is God's church. And these are God's people who are saints and sanctified. So you think about being sanctified. All you have in imagination was sanctified me. And, 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 and it's also part of being holy. Saints that are being sanctified are called holy because he said, be ye holy as I am holy. But you can't be holy without him. Right. Holiness is not a dress. Mm-hmm. Holiness is not something you put on and off. Holiness is something that God does to you as he builds your character in his righteousness. As you develop your becoming a saint, as you are being sanctified, God is imputing his holiness unto you. 
A lot of times we think that person dresses holy or that person is sanctified or that person is anointed. You have to understand that God is doing this work in each and every one of us. He promised that he would complete the work that he started in each and every one of us. But we have to get to the point in our paradoxical thinking that we never get beyond what God is trying to do to us and through us, but it has to be done by him. It has to be done by him. And that's why I want to prove out you are called saints and you are called to be sanctified. And then Paul says, grace and peace unto you. Now he's talking to this church that's committing all kinds of sins and he still call him a saint. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it. Sainthood and coming to Christ has nothing a little to do with your performance. It has what you do with what you believe. You think you can do right. You think that God's going to reward you in the sense of sainthood, do it right. No, you got sainthood the minute that you came to Christ. It has little to do with your behavior because he the one who died for you. He the one who rose for you. So then why are you worried about what you're doing at this point in time until you understand you got to be in Christ first. Let's get put the first things first. Let's not worry about behavior until we worry about a person being saved. Amen. And some of y'all say, some people in, in the world, they get all, all these, these things they need to do to get saved. They got to do this. They got to go to church. They got to do this. They got to say this. They got to come get the handshake. They got to get the oil sprinkled on them. They got to go down and baptize. All this stuff that the religious people yeah. put on you, and you feel like, man, I can't do it. Guess what, saints? We couldn't do it either. Nope. That's why we needed a Savior. Amen. No religious activity gets you saved. It's what you have faith in that gets you saved. Mm -hmm. Go look at go to First Thessalonians chapter five, verses seven and eight. What is that, Steve? Right. First First Thessalonians chapter five, verse seven eight. Listen to this. It's chapter four. Chapter four, verse seven and eight. Right. Yeah. Go. Sorry, four. For God has not called us for impurity. God hasn't called you for impurity. Now think about this. You're called to be saints and now he's saying God has not called you to be impure. Mm -hmm. But what? But in holiness. But in holiness. In righteousness. In sanctif sanctification. Go ahead. Therefore, whoever disregards this disregards not man but God. So it's, if you regard what God is trying to call you into and call you, you're disregarding God and the Holy Spirit. Okay, But a lot of times what we do is we spend so much time trying to identify other people not being this and we can't realize we're doing the worst thing to them by doing that. Mm -hmm. God called them. Amen. If they believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior before they sin, they are saved. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, what do they do? They need to believe. They need to come by faith. Go to Hebrews 2 and 11. Hebrews 2 and 11. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. All have one source. So he who is sanctified and he who is being sanctified. So us and Christ who sanctifies us has one source. That is God. There's not many sources. There are not many ways. There's only one way, the narrow way. And what we have to identify with, we have the same source that raised him from the dead is raising us to the newness of life. The power of the Holy Spirit is sanctifying you. And all you need to do is believe. But you say, well, pastor, uh, sometimes I make mistakes. Well, you have to remember, in the Corinthian church, they were doing all kinds of things. He still called them saints. He never disregarded what God has called the people. Peter had to go through that when he was dealing with Cornelius. Before he went to Cornelius' house, the sheep came down and he said, I'll never call that clean. I'll never eat that, God. And God had to explain to him, don't you call common or dirty what I done cleaned up. And you see, you have to have an experience of that as a saint of God and a hypocrite. 
Because when I talk to people, I don't talk to people from a high lofty position. I talk to people from a humility position. Because guess what? What no better sin in this room than me. And we all should be saying that. When I'm dealing with people who are wondering about church, I'm like, whatever you done don't make no difference because I was worse. The only difference between me and you, I took a shower. <laughs> That's all. And you say, well, what you mean you took a shower? What I did is came to Christ and let him clean me up. <laughs> and the hypocrisy is, did he clean me up from everything that day? No. I had to keep coming back. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Because guess what? As soon as I got out the shower, since I lived with the old man for so long, I was used to doing old man stuff. The new man hadn't any strength yet. But as I gained the word of God and the power of the resurrection that went throughout my body, God began to change me. And the volume of sin that was turned up is now being turned down. And I can learn how to live a life of sanctification. My character is that. It's developing into that. And my character is being grown so I can carry the gift and, let, and use the gift for the growth of the body so that all people that come to walk in truth, all the gifts we have up in here can work together for the good for those who love God that are calling to his purpose. And we're here to accept anybody and everybody because what no worse sinner than all of us in here. The hypocrisy of it all. God calls sinners saints. The world says once you're a thief, you're always a thief. The world says once you're a liar, you're always a liar. The world says once you're a cheater, you're always a cheater. But God says, not with me. Those of us who've been to the penitentiary, we have a number that will ride with us for the rest of our life. And it's not our social security number. <laughs> They will pull you over in a traffic stop and they will see that number before they even know who you are. Because the world wants to identify you with all the wrong you did. But God wants to identify you with all the right he did. Amen. I'm not always excusing sin by, the long, by no means. Don't, don't believe that I'm compromising with sin because I'm not. What I'm trying to say is that in the hypocrisy of the church, we have saints and sinners together because you can't be a saint until you was a sinner. If you was a saint coming out the womb, you don't need Jesus. <laughs> See, we need a savior because we're, we're hypocrites. We need a savior because we lie. We need a savior because we sin. We need a savior because we can't do it ourselves. Come on, man. Come on. So when people come through the door, we just need to let them know. You come through the door just like you are. And we accept you for like you are. We want you to come like you are. We don't want you to think you can do anything. You coming because you can't do what needs to be done. But we're going to tell you about a God that can. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's look at this God that can. Let's see the, let's see the exchange that he did. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Read it, Steve. 1 Peter 3 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins. The righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. The righteous for the unrighteous. That's the exchange. He gave himself up, the righteous, for the unrighteous. So in other words, the only way that, that, that you can participate in this exchange is to admit that you're unrighteous. Jesus didn't come to save the sick. I mean, the, the well-off. He came to save the sick. He didn't come to save the righteous, the self-righteous. He came to save sinners. And with that, we have to understand, by nature, we're born into this sin and shaped into this iniquity. So, so Jesus is the perfect sacrifice. He said, once and for all, you don't need another sacrifice. You don't need to get baptized again. You just need to make sure you came the first time right. See, there are many false conversions in the church because you've been churched. You think because you walk through the building and you got the right hand of fellowship and everybody loved on you and you joined the church, you saved. No, you, you have joined the church, but we want you to join the body of Christ. 
which is the invisible church. And once you join the visible church, then you can join a, a visible church. But the visible church needs to match what the visible church is doing. What I'm saying to you is the visible church should take on the character of the invisible God who saved them. God is holy. God is righteous. And he saves us. And he saves us to the uttermost. But you have to understand, you got to admit you're a sinner. you got to come clean. You don't have to come clean to me. That's okay. The Bible tells us saints to confess our sin one to another. But before you come to me and we do that kind of relationship building thing, you need to go to God and, and confess your sins Amen. so you can be saved. Amen. I can point you to the Savior, but I can't make you go. I can have an opinion about all your sins and say, I ain't do all that. But see, I don't compare yourself to me. I compare myself to him. Yeah. He's holy. Yeah. I'm not. He, he's righteous. I'm not. He did the exchange and I couldn't. Go to uh, Romans chapter uh, 5. Verse 7 and 8. Romans 5, starting at 7. For one was scarcely, will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. You saved from the wrath of God. He's saying, in a nutshell, what he's saying is, there's, there's men that look to, appear to be righteous. There's a pen, men that appear to be good. And he said, but they weren't required to do anything because they weren't holy. They were relatively righteous. You know some good people. Mm -hmm. The person sitting next to you might be a good person relative to the person sitting behind you. Or the person sitting next to you, or your left or your right, or even to me. But the key is they're not holy enough to reach God. So what God says is that once and all sacrifice, I decided to do that for, for unsaved folk. I decided to do that for sinners. I didn't do that for righteous people. I did that for sinners. And because I did that for sinners, all men can be saved. But you got to come. You got to come through the narrow gate. You can't come up any way you want to. You got to come the way Jesus wants you to come. Because that's the only way you can get the forgiveness of your sin. Don't you know you are one confession away from having all your sins, past, present, and future forgiven? Amen. Mm -hmm. But see, when you church, you think you got to do a whole bunch of other stuff. <laughs> I got to give an offering. I got to come to Bible study. I got to come to Sunday school. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to. There's things you got to do and things you don't do. Only thing you need to do is believe and come to Christ. And you could come to Christ sitting in your bathroom. You would come to Christ sitting in your car. You come to Christ while you're out with the fellas and the ladies drinking and turning up. But see, something happens when I've heard stories where people have been in the middle of turning up and doing what they used to do. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just step in and say, the taste is gone from their mouth. Jesus. And they try their best. Drink, drink, drink. Smoke, smoke, smoke. And they can't get high no more. And then the Lord say, what you doing that for? I done took the taste from your mouth. I done removed that desire from you. Sovereignly. You didn't, you didn't know I was coming, did you? But today is your day. See, I didn't know when the Lord was coming, when that demon was sitting on my bedpost. But today, that was my day. I didn't know it was that was my day, but when I look back, I say that was the day the Lord showed up in my door. Amen. And he reached in that window and said, not him. What I deserved to do was die. What I deserved was the wrath of God. But God said, not him. God is always willing to give you more, more of him and less of what you deserve. Amen. And he doesn't predicate it on you being good. He likes the wretched. He likes the, the, the downtrodden. He likes the ones who are culturally unacceptable. Yes. Because those are the ones he chooses. Our lesson yesterday was about God chooses the ones you least expect. Yes. Why does God do that? Why does God give us such a paradox that he chooses these wretched people to carry his word? He said, I'm going to tell you why. Because you get, guess what? Even though it may look like you're not qualified, you're the right person I need because I want to confound the wise. I want to bring the fools 
that are wise in this world to their knees with the wisdom of God. I want to call things into existence as though they were not. You are the not and you're called into existence to carry his word, to be his representative, to be his ambassador. All because you one day you trusted in what God did for you on the cross. You got to trust him. You're trying behavior modification. That don't work. Been there, done that. Well, I'm just going to stop drinking for a while. I'm just going to stop smoking for a while. I'm going to stop. Well, that, you pick your own poison. It's like shaking up a soda bottle. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Then all of a sudden, it goes everywhere now. Because you're trying to deal with flesh with flesh. God's holiness is his character. He never takes it on and off. But he tells you to put on a new creature. You got to put them on. He never takes it off. And he hopes that once you put it on that it's so good to you, you ain't going to never want to take it off. This is how we come to Christ. In a paradox. I'm still a sinner. But he called me a saint. And what I'm doing is learning who God is and saying God made some promises. In Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, you're going to see some things. You're going to see God's grace, which is unmerited favor. Then he told them peace, which is shalom, which is God's fruit. Because peace is one of the fruits of the spirit, right? Yeah. So in the greeting, in this exaltation, in verse 1, 2, and 3, he said grace and peace, favor and fruit. Favor and fruit. To this church. That's on the DL. He didn't say y'all going to hell. He's, he's going to tell them. You're not living up to your calling. The Bible says make your election sure. No I'm not going to live up to my calling. I have to let God live through me. So I can live up to my calling. Amen. I have to submit to the Holy Spirit. That I learned in his word. To live up to his calling. Yeah. I can't do it out of my own will. Because guess what my flesh wants to do? It wants to live too. But, it, but again, the Bible tells us to crucify our flesh. Crucifying your flesh is simply mean you submit to what God say. That's all it means. In the hopes that once you learn the goodness of God and you see the benefits of, of following God, you just say, you know what? I don't even feel like doing that no more. The Bible describes it this way. He says, when I was a child, I just did and thought childish things. But once I became an adult, I put those things away. Amen. Only way you can put them away is when you have a comparison. God's way, your way. Amen. Am I still going to slip and fall? Yeah. Am I going to still make mistakes? Yeah. Because the Bible tells me that we all fall short daily. But he did tell me, too, that even though I fall short, he never leave me nor forsake me. He also told me that I can walk and know the knowledge of God and the power of the resurrection. That I can have all wisdom. In that verses 1 through 9, he said you got all spiritual gifts. You got all the knowledge. So it's not about him not being provided. It's about you submitting so you can gain access. Go to uh, 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 Romans 5 and 1. Read that. Romans 5 and 1. Start there, yes. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith. By what? By faith. No, I got to join the church. Mm -hmm. by, by, by faith. 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 Faith in who? Stay right there, Steve. By faith in who? God. No, not just God, in Jesus. What about Jesus do I have faith in? I got faith that he died for me. I got a faith that his blood cleanses me from all sin. I got faith that he rose from my justifications. So since I have that, Steve, go ahead. We have peace with God. Oh, there we go. I have the fruit of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. I can only get it at one store. <laughs> I can't go to Schnooks and get it. I can't go over to the gallery and get it. I can only get it at the foot of Jesus. Read. Through him, we have, been, have also obtained access by faith. Unto this grace in which we stand. We stand in grace. We stand in grace. 
What Paul is going to discuss in Corinthians is the difference in your the, the, the understanding. You have a standing with God and you have a state in God. And what I mean by that is your standing is what God said. You are a saint. You are, you are holy. You are being sanctified. But your state is where you are right now with God. Your level of maturity in God. If I'm going to New York, that is my standing. That's where I'm going. That's my destination. I want to stand in New York. But I may be in Missouri, so I got to get to walking. <laughs> same thing with God. You know, wherever you are right now, wherever you are, everybody in this room is on the same journey, on the same path, but we're at different maturity levels. And I've always taught this. What covers you between where you are and where you're going is grace. Is that fruit. And you can only access and appreciate the fruit that you have by tasting the fruit and walking in the peace that God has given. You are no longer an enemy of God. But you have to believe that. I have to encourage that in you. That yeah, you stumbled, you went back out, you had a good time, and you've done some things wrong, and you know it's a sin. The fact that you know it's a sin is a good thing. Because before then, you didn't care. But now you care. Now you're like, well... I know I shouldn't do that. And then what? let me tell you what happened to saints to show how hypocritical they are for those who are listening and ain't saved. What they'll do with sin and don't come to church because they're scared to come to church because they think something's going to happen to them. <laughs> they're going through all the problems of their life and now they want to back up on church. And then, But then when everything's going good, they want to come to church. No, it should be reversed. Yes. You, should come, you should run to the church house and give God some praise when you didn't sin the most. You say, well, ain't that playing with God? How can that be playing with God when he wants you in his house? We have to lead you. We got to show you how good God going to love you because you believe that he saved you. And we got to get you to Romans 2 and 4. It says, don't you know the goodness of God should lead you to repentance? Repentance is more than just godly sorrow. Repentance is mean that you've changed your mind about the thing. That means if, it, if the right way was the wrong way, I'm going to go the left way because that's the right way. <laughs> That's what you're trying to get to. But you were saying to God, but I'm still doing some stuff. Okay. And the fact that you even want to talk about it means that you done made some strides. The fact that you feel kind of perplexed about it. Because you're in the paradox. You were saint, but you're still doing wrong. But how do I get right? Keep coming. Keep trusting. Keep reading. Keep praying. Keep believing. And God will deliver you. He didn't say he would not. Romans uh, uh, 10 and 9 tells you that. You can be delivered. You will be delivered. But again, you have to understand, he already said you've been delivered. Because God is not governed by time. God is always in the what? Now. He's never in the past. He's never in the future. He invented time for man. So you can measure. But God sees you eternally. Not temporally. You keep looking at yourself temporally. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Yeah, okay. But the only way you're going to stop is look at yourself as an eternal being. That God is putting you his holiness. He putting you his fire. He putting you... His sanctification. He put in you his righteousness. And what you have to do is discover uh, uh, discover that in you. You got a war going on in you if you come to Christ. That's why I'm saying maybe you don't need to come. Because you're going to have a war going on in you all the time. God's way or the world's way. God's way or the world's way. And that's going to be going on all the time until you die. But what will happen is if you start growing in the grace and the knowledge, start living out the life in peace, then what happens is you keep biting up that fruit. Then you not only get peace, you get love and joy. And once you get love and joy, you can practice self-control. But we got to deal with the internal before we deal with the external. You can't clean yourself up. You got to let God clean you up. And sometimes God going to whoop you. The Bible tells us about him being a good parent. He said he chastises those he loves. So when you go into the woodshed with God, that's a good thing. When, you, when God take off his belt, that's a good thing. Because he's not taking off his belt because he don't love you. He's taking off his belt because he do love you. Just like a good parent. We whoop you because we love you. Because we know if you continue on that way, what's worse is down the line that you won't be able to handle. You don't think you can handle a whooping, but trust me, when the world gets hold to you, it'll whoop you right to the grave. It ain't nothing wrong with going to the grave unless you're unsaved. 
That's the only, that's the only problem with dying. Yeah. If you weren't saved, you're going to hell. But look how great you can be saved. All you have to do is confess your sins and believe your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and was raised from the dead. He died for your sins. And believe that he, he did that for you and accept him as your Lord and your Savior. You, you, know, you got to do both. You can't just accept him as one. They come in a package. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The paradox I'm always in. You know, since Kay was using herself, she came and she said, Pastor, I can't remember everything that was said. that you ain't supposed to. <laughs> this is the deal. God said he would bring back to remembrance everything that you need. Remembrance means that it must have forgotten. Because you can't remember what you ain't forgotten. The, anytime somebody says, I remember, that means at one time they had it, but they lost it in their mind. Okay, God said that he would bring back things to remember when you're confronted with evil, when you're confronted with people who are going to talk against God. That's one level, but let's just expand a little bit. God will always bring back to your remembrance his word when the time to have his word. So I told, okay, you got the lesson, you got the questions, then when you want to go teach that to your family and friends, God will bring you back to remembrance everything that you need to tell them because God said he's not going to leave, let, let his word fall void. So don't worry about how much you remember. Just keep telling God, I want to know. I want to remember. And God say, don't be so hard on yourself. He understands like you got a lot going on. But God say, I'm with you. I never leave you, no forsake you. You have the mind of Christ. He said, have this mind that's in Christ Jesus. You have that mind, but you have to understand. You get that mind. You have access to that mind through faith. And therefore, we come to Bible studies. Therefore, we come learn the word of God. Therefore, we come celebrate with one another. On Sunday, this is a celebration of what we're trying to do is uplift you, instruct you, and guide you to God. Whatever you fall short of, a brother or sister may have what you need. If you need joy, maybe that sister have it. Maybe you need, if you need love, that brother may have it. And what you get to do is come in and die on everybody's peace. Amen. Even though you may be in turmoil. Amen. Come in at the table. It's okay. We're not going to judge you. How can we judge you when God already said you a saint? So if I judge myself other than a saint, I judge you other than a saint, then I am the most foolish person in the world. Because how I'm going to declare dirty what God has already said is clean. That'll make me a fool. Go to Acts 26, 18. Let's see how we end this paradox. Let's see who are the kind of people, how you need to come and what and what not. Go ahead, Steve. Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes so that they might turn from darkness to light. When we preach, when we teach, when you share, you're open their eyes that they might what? Turn. That's repent. That they may repent and turn from darkness to light. So my prayer is when you hear this, you want to turn. But guess what? You can't turn unless the Holy Spirit put it in you to turn. That's it. I want a Holy Ghost turn. I don't want no flesh turn. We didn't have many people join this church on emotions. Yeah. And because we're teaching ministry, that we teach hard and we teach hard. Hey. We teach hard up in here. Hey. We teach it good up here, line by line, verse by verse. We teach it hard up in here. But you know what? They don't want that. They want the fix that they got the first time they heard a message that, that made them feel some kind of way. But see, the thing about it is, you might not get that message all the time. We had them kind of messages from time to time. But the thing about it is, what we got is steady feeding of the word. What 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 uh, God told Peter was feed my sheep. He didn't say entertain them. That's right. Amen. That's right. And he said the word is salt. And light, not sugar and spice and everything nice. As y'all heard me say, the church has too much spiritual diabetes are going on up in here. Amen. So when we talk to people, your whole mission should be able to want to see that person's soul saved and take them from the darkness into the light. And then what's the? And from the power of Satan to God. From the power of Satan to God. There's only two teams. Ephesians chapter 2 tell you that. Once we walked according to the prince of the power of the air, deserving God's wrath, but no more. Thank God, but God. See, what we're trying to do with that telling you is he wants to let you have a but God moment. You either work for Satan or you work for God. We're going to take you from darkness to the light. We're going to take you from Satan to, to God. And then what else, Steve? 
that they may receive forgiveness of sins. Oh, so if I take you from darkness to light, from Satan to God, I want you to understand God is the place where you will receive forgiveness of sins. And check this out. The only way you can access it is, read. And a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Sanctified by what? Faith. So if we go back to, 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 to 1 Corinthians, he said that they are the sanctified and they are saints. And the reason why they're sanctified and saints is not because of their behavior. It's because they believe what God did for them. That's how you become sanctified. That's how come you become the saint. Your standing with God is sainthood. Your state is maturity. What I know, what I believe is he said it. I will complete the work that I start in you. So saints, we need to give room for the newer saints and say, look at that God of ours. He working on them just like he worked on me. Look at them. They come in all toe up because they didn't did something wrong. And we don't lift them out of them. We just tell them, keep on walking with God. Amen. Just trust God. Just keep walking with God. You, don't, you, you Ain't nobody in here so righteous that they don't need God. Especially not me. Amen. Do you know the more you willing to be naked with God, the more God is willing to pour into you? The more, the more you're willing to be specific about your sin and what you have trouble and struggle with, you know, God wants to deliver you from it, but he's waiting for you to fess up to what he already know. You know how a parent already know when their child has done wrong and just wait for them to tell them? And you even kind of warn them, I already know what you did, so you might as well tell me. And they still lie. So we do the same thing in the church. They don't want to fess up. They want to say they're struggling like the Corinthian church. They want to pretend like they're pristine. We only as clean as we allow God to clean us. But God still say that we are saints. The paradox. I'm a sinner and a saint at the same time. But the key is I'm being conformed into his image to where sin has no more dominion over my life anymore. That's what the Romans tells us. He said sin should have no dominion over you. You should live above the sin. It should not control you. Yes, when you try to do good, evil in you is always present. But you have the power to deny the evil that's in you. You have that power. But I can't make you believe it. You got to believe it on yourself because it's say by faith. It didn't say by my faith. It say by your faith. Right, right. You got to believe you got forgiveness and sin, but you don't feel like it. it ain't about a feeling. It's about a fact. Amen. Thank God that God don't deal in your feelings. Amen. Thank God when he says you are forgiven, it don't make no difference if you don't never feel it. Yes. Come on. But you better believe it. Yep. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. Lord, that church in Corinthians is something else. It's just like us. Of all the churches in the Bible, the first Corinthian church is the American church. Amen. It's truly the American church. It has all kinds of issues, all kinds of problems. But Lord, Paul is going to set the, set the table straight. He's going to lay down the law. He's going to lay down his word. He's going to lay down your word to the church that they may walk upright. The sad part about it, God, is you don't even hold back gifts from a church like that. You said they got every gift. But you said in your word, you give gifts without repentance. Lord, I wouldn't do that. But Lord, you do that because it's your will and not mine. So Lord, let us walk by faith and not by sight. Let us continue to care for each other. And let us continue to walk out this paradox. Sinners turn saints by the blood of Jesus. Sinners turn saints by the will of God. Sinners turn saints by the resurrection. Sinners turned saints because we came by faith and believed in you, your son Jesus. It's in Jesus' name that I pray these things. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, y'all. We always want you to be encouraged, blessed, and at peace if you're listening around the world. And we always want you to do what? Walk, Walk in truth. truth. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church Broadcast on the WITRN Network. Come join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for Sunday Worship. Bible study is held on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are located at 3006 
North Lindbergh Boulevard Suite 711, St. Louis, Missouri, 63074. All are welcome and we look forward to seeing you soon.